now the next thing there are multiple other other kind of options we can use like on the client side there are some configurations like on the client side configurations uh, there are some customers customer routers they they get the ip address one option is static ip the same way which we configure now there is a possibility that you have a dhcp server running in the service for network and that service for network is providing you the ip address via dhcp now in this kind of scenarios how the configuration goes and what are the slight change in the configurations let us see them now for this to work what i'm doing is i'm going to my router one on the router one i want the ip address it has to get via dhcp automatically and on the router two i have a dhcp server i'm going to configure some dhcp server and which is going to assign the ip address to the clients so let's go to router one and what are the configurations we do here let's let's first try to understand the commands and then we'll get into the configuration as well now the first thing we need to configure the dhcp server on the router two so we are assuming that we have we don't have a D external dhcp server here uh, if you have external dhcp server you can still use that one but here we are we don't have any other devices connected so we are going to use our router as a dhcp server now the first thing i'm going to exclude the address called 10.002 because this is the address which which router 2 is already using and i don't want any of the client to get assigned with this ip address <clears throat> and after that i need to define the range of the pool so here i'm using 10.000 and then slash 8 so which means the client will be assigned an ip address which belongs to any any address it can be 10.0 10.network except this 10.002 now we can also add some dns dhcp informations here so we're not getting into those those informations here now after that for verification i need to go to this interface right now here i'm not using the physical interface it's my dialer interface on the client side we need to say we need to remove the ip address that's what i'm using no ip address and then i'm going to say ip address dhcp which means get the ip address from the dhcp server and we are not assigning the ip address here we are removing it and then we are making the interface back to no shutdown state so let's go and verify the same configurations on the router <coughs> 2 the first thing i'm going to say ip dhcp exclude i'm going to exclude the address 10.002 and then i'm going to say ip dhcp pool and the name of the pool again i'm using ccie some name dhcp some name underscore dhcp and then i'm going to define the network range the network i want to use 10 network and the slash 8 subnet mask or you can define 255000 and then that's it and apart from that i'm not doing any other things so on the server just configure the dhcp and on the client side that is on the router one i want if i verify the configurations on the dialer interface I'm not going to remove any other configurations except the IP address. <coughs> except the IP address, we are not going to remove anything. And then I'm going to shut down the port. Let's shut down the port first, just to ensure that. And then I'm saying that IP address DHCP. I want the IP address to get via DHCP server. And then back to no shutdown state. So just for the faster conversions, I did the shutdown, shutdown of the interface. Now I should see there should the dialer interface should get assigned an automatic IP addresses, just like the same thing you'll see. This kind of message I should expect. And then I should see the dialer interface should get an IP address of 10.001. So now you can see the interface dialer one has been assigned with an IP address of 10.001 from the DHCP. And now if I verify show IP interface brief, you can see the interface is up. And if I try to verify 10.002, I should be able to ping to the server. Now this is one alternate way of doing the configurations via DHCP server. And probably there is one more way you can instead of using some DHCP server, uh, let me just show you one more method of uh, getting the IP address dynamically on the client side instead of getting it manually you can also create some local pool on the router too and you can allow the client 
to get an IP address from the local defined pool instead of DHCP server. Now the major difference between these two is using the DHCP server you can provide some additional information like uh, DNS and default gateway all this information but using the local pool you can only assign an IP address to the clients. But in this scenario I just want only to get an IP address so let's see how to configure that as well. Now to configure that uh, local pool so there are some specific configurations so the first thing I'm going to remove the DHCP configurations from from the router 2 this is removing the DHCP because I don't want to assign I don't want my server to assign the IP addresses to the clients based on the DHCP it has to be done via based on the local pool now based on the local pool now what we can do is we can we can define some local pool here by giving a command called IP local pool and any name for the pool like I'm using CCI pool here and we can define what is the starting IP address and we can define the ending IP address now in my scenario um, I'm not using multiple IPs because anyway I have only one client here so I'm just using only one starting and ending same IP addresses okay so if you want you can you can give something like 10.003 to 10.00100 if you have more number of clients and then and then we on under the virtual interface here because on the server we have a virtual template we need to tell that the peer default IP address pool from this so which means whatever the peer connected on the opposite side he should get the IP address from the pool whatever we define here based on that and then on the router one we need to say IP address negotiated so we don't say IP address DCP here we need to say IP address negotiated because it is going to negotiate the IP address with the neighbor not with the DHCP so let's go to the router let's let's go and configure these things on router 1 so on the router 1 here actually this command is it has to be I, I miss the interface here now this is the interface dialer 1 so on the dialer 1 interface I'm removing the IP DHCP that's that's something what we'll do on the first interface dialer 1 if you just check out the configuration so dialer 1 is getting the IP address via DHCP and I don't want via DHCP I want to take the IP address via negotiation so I'm going to say I have no IP address DHCP and then I'm going to say IP address negotiated and then let me just shut down the interface and make it back up so let's go to the server side on the server side on the router 2 I need to remove the DHCP configurations so let us see what are the configurations present uh, as per the previous task here so now I'm going to say no IP DHCP exclude address and then no IP DHCP pool CCI DHCP now there is no more DHCP on the router 2 and on the router 1 also we removed uh, IP address DHCP on the interface. Now the next thing we need to configure the local pool so we need to say IP local pool there is a command IP local pool and then we can use the default pool or we can create some name so I am going to say CCI underscore pool and the starting IP address I am using 10.001 and the ending also I am using 10.001 just, just to make it simple or we can use any other address or just you can give one IP address also so after that we need to configure this pool the local pool under the virtual template because the virtual template which we are using on the router 2 we need to configure on that we need to say peer peer and then the command will be pool so the peer default IP address so it has to be peer the peer default IP address has to be uh, from the pool so it's not from the DHCP pool it's from the pool and then the name of the pool will be CCI underscore pool so just ensure that you're not giving any wrong names here CCI underscore pool okay so done so once you are done with this I think we we, we have configured already this command so let's go to router 1 and verify the interface show IP interface brief now on the dialer interface I should expect the interface has to come up and I should get the IP address from through negotiation process. So I should expect this one on the router 1 I should see the dialer interface 
uh, should get an IP address of 10.001 through negotiation. Now you can see the link stays. Now it is up. So now you can see the interface virtual access one is up and you can see the dialer interface uh, is getting the IP address based on the local pool. And if I try to ping to the remote IP address, I should be able to ping to the remote IP address. Now these are the different multiple options we can use for assigning the IP addresses on the client side. Now depending upon the requirement, we can use any one of these options. And after that, what we'll do is uh, we'll try to verify some basic OSP of implementations. Now the next thing I'm going to configure OSP between them. Let's say you are running some point-to-point uh, -point Ethernet networks and you are running some PPP on that and you want to establish the OSP of neighborship between the two company routers. Now in that scenarios, how, how we can do? Anyway, we know how to configure the basic OSP of, but there are some, some real issues will come when you are running PPP OE. Let's try to understand those options here. So I'll go to router OSP of one and I'm using only 10 dot network interface on, on both the routers. So let me configure those things on both the routers. On the router 2 as well. I'm going to configure the commands. Now I should expect the neighborship between them. So the neighborship is not coming up. You can see the neighborship is stuck in X start stage. Let's verify on the router 1. So IP OSP of neighbors. Now you can see on the router 2, the neighborship is stuck in X start stage here. Now I should see the neighborship normally, but it's not coming up. Let us, add, let us enable some of the debug commands to verify the reason. Debug IP OSP of adjacencies I'm using here. And then, and then you can see there are some debug messages here. It is receiving a DVD from this one. And the MTU X start stage. Here you can see the interface is having a larger MTU. Now there is some MTU mismatch between the two routers. And if I check on the router one, if I verify the MTU, so let's let, let's see what are the interfaces I'm using here. On the router one, I'm using a dialer interface. And on the router two, I'm using virtual template interface, right? So let's verify on the router one, show interface, show interface dialer one, include MTU. Uh, we can see the default MTU is here 1500 bytes. That's the default MTU here. Let's verify on the router two here, show IP interface brief. Now, let me undebug this one. So show interface, show IP interface brief. Now here the actual interface I'm using here is virtual access two. Now if I give show, show interface virtual. Now whenever you are, you even though you are creating a virtual template, the actual configuration goes uh, into the virtual template interface. But when we verify, we use these virtual access interfaces. So virtual access two, and then in that I'm going to say MTU. Now you can see here server is going to add some MTU of 1492 by default. And when you compare with the MTU size on the router one, it is a default 1500. Now why it is doing that? Because by default, when the server is going to run PPP OE, it's going to add some eight bytes of extra information, header information into that, just to ensure that the entire packet size goes around 1500 bytes to, over, to overcome that fragmentation kind of things it's going to use this this particular size. Now there is a mismatch of the MTU here, which which is actually affecting the OSP of neighborship. Now whenever you are running PPP OE and you try to enable OSP of, you may find some neighborship issues issues because of this MTU mismatch. Now in this kind of scenarios, we can adjust the MTU on the client side as well as 1492, just to ensure that both the sites it matches, and then they form the neighborship. Now normally you can even change this MTU on this side here as well, but it's something not recommended because whenever it exceeds 1500 bytes, it's going to do something called fragmentation and interleaving kind of things. And one, when, it, when the MTU size exceeds 1500, it will do some fragmentation which adds some extra overhead on the routers for doing the fragmentation.
So that's something not really recommended. So that's the reason I go to router one and I will configure on the dial interface. I need to configure IP MTU. I'm going to configure the same MTU on this side. Just to match the MTU, I should see the neighborship should come up now. You can see the neighborship is up here. So if I verify neighborship is up, now that is that's something recommended. So when you whenever you run any OS, especially OSP protocol between PPP OE interfaces, we need to ensure that there won't be any mismatch of the MTUs. So by default, there will be a mismatch between the server and the client configurations. We can ensure that both have the same MTU by changing these parameters. Now, apart from that, we can we can go with the others, other similar kind of configurations like uh, PPP. If you want to run PPP on this interface, on the router 2, we need to configure the PPP on the virtual template interface because all the configurations goes on the virtual template and whatever you do on a normal serial interface, the same configuration goes on the virtual template interface as well. Now, similar way, whatever the configurations you do on the client side, it has to go on the dialer interface. So it's more like, you know, you need to treat these interfaces as a normal serial interfaces, the same way you do on the serial interfaces, exact the same configuration goes under this dialer interface and virtual template interfaces. So even if you want to uh, implement any PPP features like authentication or multi-link kind of things, you can go and configure everything on these interfaces.